In today's video, we're testing out how sharp a knife can be made out of wood. Can you actually make a functional cutting edge out of it, or is it going to be more for decoration? Hey, Nate. Nate, what did, what did one flag say to the other flag? I don't know. Nothing. It just waved. No, but Nate! But Nate, we have new shirts! For 4th of July! You can get yours now at the end of the store. <laughs> Guys, we're trying something a little bit different today. I am here in my friend's garage slash workshop, and I'm the only one here. I don't have a co-host, and I don't have a cameraman. Well, this is one more of those videos that's filmed entirely on my cell phone. Uh, fortunately, I have two cell phones, so we might be able to get a couple of different angles. But for the most part, it's all going to be done like this. We are going to do some fun experiments, and I think it should be a pretty good time. Here's what we're doing and the reason we're here. My friend in this garage has all of the tools needed to make some really cool knives. Normally, we've made them out of metal, and they look just like normal knives. They're, they're shiny, they're metallic, they've got nice handles on them. But today, we wanted to try something different, or I wanted to try something different. I had an experiment where I wanted to see what happens if you make a knife out of wood. And so I have three different types of wood here. This right here is a standard 2x4. This is probably fir or pine. It's, you know, it's just normal building material. This is from Home Depot or Lowe's or something like that. And it's not known for being a super high quality wood or a super hard wood. It's just known for being cheap and kind of straight. Next up, we've got our two fancier woods. This right here is Lignum Vita, which is the densest wood in the world, I believe. There's some others that may be about tied with it, but we've done experiments with this stuff before. It's crazy how dense this stuff is. It will actually sink in water, and it's very, very hard. Perhaps the hardest type of wood, and it has a very tight grain. That tight grain is one of the reasons I thought this would probably be a good wood to try. However, the grain on Lignum Vita wood is not straight or lined up. It cross hatches in these interesting ways that make the wood very strong, but I don't know if they'll be beneficial in making a knife edge. This right here is a block of ebony. Ebony is also extremely hard and extremely heavy for wood. The ebony also has a very tight, small grain, and it's a lot more lined up than the grain in the Lignum Vita wood, which is why I think it may be a contender. It's not as hard or as heavy, but because of the shape of the grain, I think it has a good chance of also holding a decent edge. So we're gonna try making knives out of all three of these, and we're gonna see what kind of result we can get. Here's the basic idea. Using three different types of wood, we're going to try and make a knife and sharpen it as much as we can. We'll test out that knife blade to see what it can and cannot cut through. Here's our block of ebony on a bandsaw. We've got a fairly wide blade here, which I'm hoping will make it so it cuts nice and straight without curving and snaking too much or without tilting angle as it goes through. Uh, we're gonna see how well that works, so we're just gonna try and cut off a piece, maybe quarter of an inch thick, something like that, and we're gonna see what kind of result we can get from it. I've got our ebony, our lignum vita, and our two by four pieces of wood. They're very rough at this point, and I really want them to be smoother than that, so I'm gonna use a disc sander, just try and sand them all down. I'll also be able to do just a little bit of shaping on that and it's nice because I have cut, not intentionally, but the bandsaw cut a little bit of a taper so it's wider on this side of the wood and narrower on that side of the wood. Uh, I'm definitely gonna be wearing a dust mask for this because just sawdust in general you want a dust mask, but then especially some of these types of exotic woods can be really irritating to your lungs. I've now got all three of these sanded down pretty well. They're not completely perfect. There's definitely some saw marks, especially on this one, the Lignum Vita. There's saw marks where it didn't cut perfectly smooth and straight, but because I am going to be shaping it and taking it down more, we'll see if we have to worry about those. I think we'll probably end up sanding them right out anyway, and definitely along the cutting edge. Making knives out of wood can be pretty fun and pretty cool maybe. The real goal, of course, though, is to see how sharp of an edge they can hold. Next step is we're going to be adding some design to these. We're gonna take some knife patterns and we're gonna choose ones we like and we're gonna trace them out onto these pieces of wood and then we'll cut those designs out with a bandsaw and then we'll uh, look more like knives at that point. All right, so our knives have you know, the, the basic beveled edge to them. They aren't sharpened by any means. And, you know, they, they're at an edge. I don't think it's much of a cutting edge at this point, but I do want to actually try sharpening them with a sharpening system. 
but I have just added a bevel on. Just for the fun of it, I do think I'm gonna go ahead and add some handles to these. All right, now you can see I've got handles attached to all the knives. I do think it makes them look nice. So now what we need to do is take our knife edges to just as fine and honed of an edge as we can possibly get. I do have just a nice little knife sharpening system and that's what I'm gonna use to give them that final edge. And we'll just see how sharp we can get these pieces of wood. So this is a sharpening tool and of course it is usually used on metal knives. This right here is a sharpening stone. I've got several different grits of that. And the rest of this is just designed to hold the sharpening stone right in the right spot. It holds it at a consistent angle. I can swivel it along the length of the blade and it lets me just sharpen and it stays at the same angle all the time so I don't accidentally you know, go too shallow or too obtuse of an angle. All of the knives are sharpened about as much as I think I'm gonna be able to get them. Uh, I've already had one slight mishap where uh, a little piece of the wood got taken out by the sharpener. So this is really thin right here and while it does have something of a good edge, it does make it a little bit fragile. Before I start testing out just how sharp these are, I am going to apply some food safe cream oil that's just designed to really bring out the look of the wood and seal it a little bit. All right, now it is time to do some tests. How sharp have we made these knives? We've got a few different things that we're gonna test out cutting here. Here is a tomato, here's an apple, I've got a block of cheese, and I've got some steak. I'm just gonna see if I can slice through this. And this isn't even cooked steak, it's just, you know, seeing if you could use it for prep before you actually, you know, cook it up. Uh, so, first, we're going to start with our 2x4 knife. This is made from a 2x4, the blade is from a 2x4. The handle is from scrap of unlabeled wood. But there is one other thing I wanna test before all of these food products, and that's a very common test in the knife making world. When you have a knife, it's to see if you can slice through a piece of paper. First off, I'll show you what this looks like with a, a stainless steel knife that's been sharpened quite a bit. This is sort of the goal right here. See that, just kind of glides through, even with these really thin little curls that I'm pulling off there. It goes really nice and easily. Can I get anywhere with our two by four knife? Oh, there we go. Aha! Hey, that actually cut through. It did not glide through the same way the stainless steel one did. Let's once again, Go back to our stainless steel knife and see how this should work. Just kind of glides right through. Can we do anything like that with our wooden knife? Well, it's cutting. It's cutting through the tomato. Kind of have to saw a little bit. That's okay. Let's just uh, shave a piece of our apple off here. That slices through very nicely, very cleanly. Wood a knife cutting an apple. Kind of a jagged edge here. It's cutting through it. It's not cutting through it with the same ease. Slicing cheese. I'm not trying for as thin. I'm just seeing if it will cut through it. I don't know. That's not bad. That's thin enough that you could put it on a sandwich. Kind of have to saw back and forth a little bit more with this one than I did with the metal one. And what I was saying before about how this knife gets thicker at the top, it's noticeable. Well, that kind of broke apart as I was cutting through it. All right, we've got a piece of steak here. This knife was specifically designed for slicing through meat. So let's see how this does. And it easily glides right down through with virtually no resistance. That worked great. Wooden knife cutting a piece of steak. I've managed to leave some splinters in the steak. Oh, yeah, there's some more. Ah! At this point, I think it's completely gone. Some of the moisture combined with the pressure I was putting on this knife to try and cut through got to it. There's no edge to speak of. It's completely edgeless now. All right, this is our ebony knife, and I did show earlier 
that it's taken a little bit of damage in the sharpening process, which is too bad. It was looking really good, but during the final sharpening, that edge was so thin that it just sort of started breaking apart. So we're still gonna do our tests. We're gonna see how well it can cut, but I think we've lost some of the structural integrity of it. This is really surprising to me, but I think that our two by four was performing better than this. Let's try our tomato. Oh, the tomato's actually working quite nicely. Paper has a lot of resistance, but tomato, not so much. It's not as good as the metal knife, obviously, but that's a pretty good thin slice of tomato right there. How about our apple? It's cutting the apple pretty well. I'd say a little better than the two x four, definitely worse than the steel. It's not a refined enough edge to cut evenly through. I don't know, that's actually pretty good. Look at that. That is a thin piece of apple slice right there. Let's try cheese. Cheese is gonna be a little bit harder than a tomato or an apple. I'm not sure if the soft knife edge is gonna be able to handle it. I was wrong, that handled it great. I think we're definitely seeing the benefit of the very thin edge I was going for here. Even though it's lost some of its definition and it's not quite perfectly honed, the whole knife is thinner and the edge is thinner and that's really letting me get some pretty good slices here. That's, I would absolutely take slices of cheese that thick on a sandwich. Our last knife could not get through the steak. It splintered a lot and I had to press so hard that I completely lost the edge. Let's see if the ebony does any better. Feeling some tearing as I'm passing through. As I pull back, it's that's where it catches. And yep, we're getting a lot more splintering, losing our edge here. Oof, I keep just cutting in one direction. I am just barely able to get through this, but I've filled it with splinters. Those are little pieces of my knife that came off. You would not want to eat that. Our lignum vita knife. How is this gonna hold up? This knife edge to begin with is by far the best looking in my opinion. Feels, well, not like a really sharp knife, but like a knife. There's one little divot right here. Let's give this a test. Here goes tomato. I think I just found a splinter from our last knife. That handled that quite nicely. Let's try this again, unbroken skin. Oh, just slices right down through it. Not bad. How's our apple gonna hold up? Well, my cutting technique isn't great, but it's cutting through the apple quite quickly. There we go. Ooh, we did have some breakage. The thick wedge shape of the knife started breaking the apple apart before it sliced all the way through. See our cheese going for a fairly thin slice. Cuts right through it nicely. That was good. That, that worked really well, actually. I would say very, very similar to the ebony knife, but just, just a slight bit ahead. I would say that worked better than the ebony. So this is our number one so far, and the blade is looking pretty good so far. Let's see if this can handle steak. Ooh, I am getting tearing when I pull this direction. Once again, that's sort of against the grain and it's starting to pull up a little bit. So I'm gonna try just like sliding the knife forward when I cut. All right, that, once again, I think that's one step ahead of the ebony. It did work, it sliced all the way through. It took a few cuts back and forth. I think we got one or two tiny little slivers, much smaller than the rest, and our knife has survived this way better than the other types, so. Uh, I'm gonna say this is the clear winner. Can you make a viable knife out of a two by four? Well, sort of. We got a knife that does cut. It was able to cut through the tomato, the apple, even the cheese fairly well. It really started struggling when we tried to cut through the steak. Using some more exotic woods, the ebony, the lignum vita, those woods gave us a much better edge. They held their edge longer. They were able to cut more, slice more, and retain their edge without getting so destroyed. Uh, it, in comparison to our two x four pine or fir knife. If there's anything else you would like to see us try, let us know down in the comments. We'd love to give it a whirl. If there is anything you'd like to see us try, let us know down in the comments. We'd love to give it a whirl. Thanks for watching. If you want to check out our most recent video, click that box up there at the top and we'll see you in the next one. Talk to you then.